In our last couple of Angular videos, we have set up our basic project and we have put out some information to the page. If we look at that in our browser, you see we have our two lists of our name. And if we click on our button, you can see we have a bunch of clicks. So this shows our Angular is working. This time though, we actually want to do a little interaction with the backend using Ajax. So for this in our backend, we have a few things set up. First, we'll take a look at our URLs file. We'll go down to our URL for name. So we're gonna have a URL like localhost slash name. It's gonna to go to our data view. And if we look at our data view, it's a form view, the generic class-based view. We have our form class and template name. Our form class is a form that we've created that accepts first name and last name. And our template name is base.html. If we didn't have this in here, it would actually throw an error because the form view actually looks for it. This is one reason it's suggested to use Django REST framework or some sort of API-based backend for doing your stuff so that you don't have to deal with some of the idiosyncrasies of some of the generic class-based views or some of the overhead of function-based views to get this to work. Anyway, moving on, we have a form valid and a form invalid, like we normally would for our forms, except in this case, we're returning a JSON response, which is fairly new to Django, so that we can just pass in a dictionary and it sends it on up. And JSON is returned to our front end, which is what we need for our Angular stuff. Next thing we'll look at is our base.html file. One thing that we've added is the jscsrf.js file. This is there so we can do our CSRF protection and it can actually be passed in whenever we do our submission of our JavaScript. I go over this in more detail in the basic Ajax episode that I'll link to in the show notes. So what we're gonna do is we're going to create a form on our page so that we can actually submit that through Angular. First though, let's see our basic form. In this case, it's a form inside of a div. We have our CSRF token tag, which pushes out our CSRF token. We have our two inputs that we want, their text input, one for first name, one for last name. Finally, we have our submit button. This is our basic form that you would use every day and it's inside of a form tag. And below our form, we have a div with a class message so that we can actually put any information to our users once something has happened. To get this to actually start working in with Angular, we need to set a controller for the div. So we'll do ng-controller equals add name controller. We're basing this on name controller, but we're just gonna put add in front so we can be a little more specific. We have our form, and forms have something interesting for Angular, so we have ng submit. So we're gonna use the save function on the controller, and we're gonna pass it in a name. So the question is, where does name come from? Well, if we go to our input, we can use an ng model, and we can set name.firstName. And then if we go to our second one, we can do ng model equals name dot last name. What this does is this prepares a object to be ready to be sent via the name. So now whenever we click on the submit button, it's going to prepare a little JSON object and send it to the save function on our add name controller. So next let's actually go in and open up our main.js file. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a controller. This is basically exactly like we have in our other controller. We have our add name controller, we've named it that. And then we have our save function except in this case we're actually using name inside of our function instead of like we have above where it's just blank this way it can accept information the next thing that we need to do is we need to do our actual Ajax call to the back end again I cover how Ajax works better in the basic Ajax video that I'll link to in the show notes so in this case we're just gonna paste it in and you can see we're calling Ajax we're calling our URL of name our method of post, and we're using for our data, first name and last name, using name.firstname, name.lastname, and that's what's being passed into this function. We're setting our data type of JSON, and then for our success and error, we're writing out information to that message element. Again, it's very basic Ajax, so if we'll open up our browser again, refresh the page, you can see everything is still there, and now we have our form with our first name and last name fields. If we we'll fill those out and hit submit, you can see we have thank you for your information. So that means it's actually successful gone and posted that to the back end. It's processed it or determined that it was a valid form submission and returned a JSON response. We can also see the JSON response if we'll open up our console into network. You can see we got everything and then we look at our name request, look at params and you can see it passed in first name and passed in last name to the back end. Then the response is thank you for your information. That's actually how we can do one more little step forward from doing our basic Angular setup to now being able to interact with the back end and being able to do Ajax stuff and start working with things the way we want to work with them with. The next step that we'll go over in our next video is actually to use ng resource. So thank you for watching and join us for our next video.